I bet that every EO4 player already heard of the difference between Western and Anatolian unit pips and how much stronger the Anatolian troops are compared to the Western ones, at least in the early game. But what if I tell you now that in 1514 your units could be here and that while everyone else keeps sitting on those cheap seats down there? I'm the student and let's get right into the High American Texas Boys. In EU4 there are two types of nations. There are normal nations to play such as Castile or such as uh, Ming or Lithuania or something like that. And then there is another type of nation and that is the Native American nation. The Native American tribe system is super boring. And on top of that you have the problems like starting at tech 1 or haven't embraced feudalism or simply that you are a native tribe governance reform which means that all you can do is migrate around. Now those natives obviously don't have their own mission tree but what they have is a generic mission tree and this generic mission tree provides some really really bad bonuses. But there is also one bonus that is actually not that bad which is in the mission Sunset Invasion as a reward you would get the High American Technology Group and you would get the High American Unit Types. Now obviously starting and playing as a native tribe American nation is not at all worth it to get this mission because the only thing that this mission does is it buffs a really really weak nation. What if I can show you how to get that mission tree and how to get that high American tech and unit type starting let's say as uh, England over here. And that's exactly the trick I'm going to show you in this video and obviously after that I'm going to show you or rather demonstrate you what is so strong about this high American tech group. So as you can see I full annex and release Portiguara or whatever it's pronounced as a vessel which made them uh, actually not no longer native tribe and which made them be ahead of time and then I moved their capital to uh, Africa which is relevant later on and as you can see I'm opening their missions right now. Um, this uh, mission tree is the same generic mission tree that I just showed you with that mission that I want to have, Sunset Invasion. And then I also moved my capital to Newfoundland so that uh, it is a colonial region. As you can see all of those provinces are owned by myself directly which means that I can feed Portugueria, which I fed a province next by before, uh, at least five provinces of those that I've uh, basically banked over there uh, by myself so that I don't have to create a colonial nation but that he has to create a colonial nation. And as you can see that is exactly what happened. And this colonial nation overtakes their tech group but is also Catholic, British and ahead of time. And then I annexed uh, this nation, Portuguara, as you can see, which lets me overtake their colonial nation. So that this colonial nation is now my colonial nation. And this means that I can now see their missions. And if you have a look on them, you'll see that uh, they got the same American native missions uh, that Portiguara had as well. And then I moved my capital back to the old world, to Europe, so that they can overtake all of the provinces in the new world. And then I just built up their country by building buildings and uh, developing them. 
so that they will be the strongest possible nation when I uh, overtake them. And this is right now the time to change the English nation into the Texan nation, as I promised in the uh, beginning of the video. And uh, as you saw, I uh, did some uh, shenanigans with the Portuguara tag over here, which uh, I leave in this one province over here and annex them after I fed them enough provinces so that they could create this colonial nation's 13 colonies, which uh, I renamed because <laughs> I didn't want it to be named uh, New Portuguara. But uh, yeah, anyways, before that, obviously, I need to uh, feed him the rest of uh, uh, yeah the rest of Texas over here, which by the way is all uh, gold because I used the special mechanic of England to create gold in all four of those provinces where it was possible. So I won't have any money issues and uh, yeah, I'm going to just spend my mana points on my colonies, uh, maybe send them a gift or something uh, as well uh, if I can and uh, we are going to see when it's done. And now that I've done that, actually, I need to make sure that they can, uh, that they, or rather I, when I play as them, can uh, complete this mission over here, which is extremely easy, because you only need five provinces on the continent of Europe, and it doesn't need to be owned by you. It ha can also be owned by your non-tributary subject, which means that I only need any nation with five provinces that I can declare war on and then vassalize them. And for that I'm actually going to uh, release a nation, I think it's going to be Northumberland, but I'm obviously not going to release him as a, a vassal or something, I'm going to release him with this button over here, with the return uh, province button. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to do that real quick and then I'm going to release myself and uh, play as the colonial nation. And now it's time to abandon my country and obviously <laughs> make England as weak as possible because uh, I'm going to invade them later, obviously. And now it's finally time. 13 colonies, 48 provinces in North America. Play as the release subject and let's go we are immediately on the great power list as you can see uh, as soon as a month tick by uh, i think we are we're going to be on the uh, seventh great uh, power place and uh, as you can see i can form every single nation that i want to i just need to choose one nation and obviously my choice has already been done i'm going to choose to form Texas. So now that I've done that and now that I've uh, showed you the how, it, uh, how it went uh, until now, I'm just going to set up the game as it, as it is. I'm going to uh, yeah, fix my economy basically, which is right now only uh, running on uh, gold basically. And uh, then I'm going to no CB uh, Northumberland over here, f uh, vassalize them or full annex them, I don't know yet and uh, complete this mission over here and uh, we're going to see when uh, this is done.
that's it. I just finished uh, the siege of uh, Sheffield over here, which means that I have now a hundred percent war score on Northumberland, which uh, obviously had no allies because I just released them a few uh, months ago. And as you probably also saw, I completed the uh, missions before this one of Sunset Invasion, which uh, I did with uh, just hiring mercenaries, so basically paying money. Uh, and uh, this one I had fulfilled uh, before releasing myself as uh, 13 colonies already. So uh, this one is the only one that is missing and obviously this is on the continent of Europe. Which means that if I now uh, piece them out, take this one province and uh, yeah, maybe even, maybe even full annex and release them because uh, it is uh, a way cleaner subject relationship with that. But uh, if I do that now, you notice that I'll have this mission fulfill Sunset Invasion, which gives me 300 mana, which is extremely nice, but also it changes my technology group to the High American and also my unit types to the High American. And uh, in the beginning of the video, you already saw what uh, this means. So let's just take it, let's just embrace the high American identity as it always has been uh, as 13 colonies and uh, there we go. Now my technology group as you can see is high American tech group. I'm a normal ahead of time in every uh, technology. I can actually take this uh, right now as well. So I'm ahead of time in every technology. I didn't start as a a native tribe which is uh, I admit the most annoying uh, type of the gameplay that you could ever have and as you can see I now have the uh, unit types of uh, yeah I I'm not going to pronounce that but you can see that the pips of this unit I'm on tech 9 you have to imagine I'm on tech 9 right I have unit pips 3 offensive fire 2 offen uh, 2 defensive fire one offensive and defensive shock and three offensive morale and two defensive morale those pips are so overpowered you can you cannot even imagine how overpowered they are and uh, to demonstrate that you just have to wait a little bit longer because i just need to do it as texas for embracing the true fire damage dealt and uh, we are going to see when I'm done with that. And oh man, I would bet a lot on the fact that you are going to enjoy this a lot, what happens after that. So just one more cut and we are there. As I promised, I'm back now in 1520, January 1520, and you can see my tech map mode over here, which is uh, <laughs> ahead of everyone else, basically. And uh, you can also already see that because I'm at my tech 10 now, I can take the decisions to form Florida or America. Uh, but for the roleplay and because it's such a cool nation, I want to form Texas instead because, uh, yeah, let's be real, uh, you are forming the USA in most of the cases if you are in the new world. So let's just do something different. For that, we just need to move our capital to uh, the to the Rio Grande region over here and I'm just going to move it to the fore just to have a little bit more protection over here, which is, uh, by the way, a gold mine. And uh, now you notice that I, uh, basically my flag changes, which is kind of weird, so I'm technically Mexican now, um, but I can also form the Texan nation. And uh, obviously I'm going to do that, as you can see, American becomes the new primary culture, which uh, isn't a problem, my uh, nation is already 20% American, but most importantly I get one of the nicest map colors in the game, I think. And uh, obviously I keep the same mission tree as, it's, uh, as you can see, but also I can take the Texan national ideas. And especially I'm going to do that for the fire damage received and land fire damage dealt over here, because uh, that in combination with the infantry combat ability that I took over here, and the insane, insane land fire unit pips of the high American uh, units, I'm going to now destroy every 
single nation in Europe and uh, why not just start with our former overlord England Okay, I guess uh, that's it with England. They've lost 43,000 troops in less than a year. I started, it, I started the war in the same year. As you saw, two battles, two stack wipes and those troops of him, I mean, they have low morale and so on, yes, uh, and 5% less discipline, but those troops were not bad, right? I mean they had they had like uh, 20k more than 20k in every army that I stack wiped so they were fighting with uh, almost a combat whip and you saw how much damage I did in the fire phase and how low my casualties were uh, when fighting them so let me just wrap up this war real quick I think uh, I mean they have uh, zero troops so this shouldn't take any longer and then we're going to go to the big boss France, which is allied to the Ottoman Empire apparently. Now I'm going to start the final round of this uh, campaign. I can actually uh, piece them out already, but before I do that I want to declare a humiliation war on France, the Ottoman Empire, Genoa, Gelre uh, and uh, a native tribe apparently. As you can see they outnumber me basically 3 to 1. Uh, pretty exactly actually so let's just see if uh, it will be enough or not and uh, yeah why not just uh, co-betrayed the Ottoman Empire uh, it doesn't matter I can't ally anyone because no one uh, knows about me so uh, yeah let's just go and I hope you enjoy okay so apparently I uh, should have started from uh, Calais but now now, enjoy. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, I think this is the time to stop now because <laughs> for some reason Austria right now intervened in this war on my side, which uh, obviously is not a, was not intended, right? Um, but uh, yeah, and also the Ottoman Empire is uh, down to um, down to low attitude. So let's just see the results, and uh, everything that you see over here is just my are uh, just my results, right? Obviously, except for those numbers over here, but those casualties are only mine. You saw it in the beginning of the war. I was outnumbered three to one, and even though I was outnumbered three to one, I was able to kill two hundred sixty thousand troops of their strength. As you can see, 150,000 of the Ottomans and uh, 109,000 of France, while I was only losing 132,000, which is only half of the amount that they took as casualties, right? And you can see also that in both cases, most of that is from battles, obviously. You can see the battles over here. I fought so many battles. And uh, even though I fought so many battles, I uh, am not out of manpower yet. I won a lot of battles, but I also lost some. But uh, yeah, uh, with more casualties on their side still. So uh, I guess you saw a few of those uh, battles already. So I just want, don't want to talk about that too much. But I want to talk about one last thing in the end, which is the pips of the units over here and the advantage that you have because there is a difference in the technology. Obviously you notice that uh, I was fighting as the Ottomans, so they have Anatolian tech, which is uh, at this stage way better as uh, a Western tech for the, uh, for the pips. Obviously the casualties that you are dealing or that you are taking uh, is connected to this uh, fire and uh, shock amount over here. As you can see on this current tech, the infantry fire is already 0 0.8 and the same uh, for Cavalry is already 0.5. You notice that fire damage can be extremely important as you saw in the battles uh, if you have uh, such a good amount of pips on that. But obviously still shock damage is uh, more important on this technology which means that those three pips on fire over here get even more valuable in the late game, the later you get. So for example over here you can see that uh, there is another 0.3 on the tech 14 which means that on t after tech 14 my troops are even better and the high american unit types over here unit tech types uh, they have 12 pips uh, and actually 5 pips of that in fire while the western techs have only 5 pips so 12 pips on the high American and 5 on the Western. And the Western have 0 pips in the fire. So that is also why they basically did no damage to me in the fire phase. Why I was doing like a thousand casualties every fire phase. This huge difference on the uh, pip amount makes it actually worth it, more than worth it, to go for the fire damage even in... 1520s and then there is another big big advantage on the high american tech which is uh, after tech 12 because after tech 12 or after tech uh, 14 as i said over here especially uh, between tech uh, 14 and tech 19 so five full technologies in the mid game so really 70 years or something in this time you will have 60% more pips than the western pips and also more pips than the Anatolian because at that tech the Anatolian pips get worse than the western ones uh, which means that you are basically going to be 60% ahead in every uh, in every unit type of every unit type in the world and uh, this 0 0.3 is actually a lot if you think about that uh, right now is 0 0.8 right
So this would basically be the prime time to do that, but uh, I just wanted to show it in a scenario where fire damage basically not exists and I made fire damage existing with, as you can see, something uh, like uh, super spears or something, because uh, apparently I was shooting a lot of spears uh, <laughs> in this technology, so really nice to see in my opinion. And that's it for now, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you can do the same thing as I did, uh, maybe you're going to play until the 1600s and see what you can reach with that. But this is where I'm going to leave you with the high American Texans boys.